All right. Good morning. July 29, 2022 Veterans Land Board meeting will now come to order. Pursuant to Section 31.015 of the Texas Natural Resources Code, I'm chairing this meeting in the commissioner's absence as chief clerk of the General Land Office as the commissioner is away on state business. Should he return prior to the conclusion of this meeting, I will relinquish the chair to him. July 29, 2022 meeting of the Veterans Land Board is being held in person at 1700 North Congress Avenue, Stephen F. Austin Building, and by video conference call is authorized under Texas Government Code Section 551.125. Access to the meeting by members of the public was published in advance in the Texas Register in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act. Any member of the public who wishes to address the Veterans Land Board should indicate so at the start of the meeting or during any public comment period. Uh, looks like with that being said, first item on the agenda is number one, approval of the minutes from the May 5th, 2022 VLB meeting. Uh, Mr. Chair, I've reviewed them and uh, move approval. I'll second that. Thank you. Motion is made, seconded, and carries unanimously to approve the minutes. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from the June 28, 2022 uh, VLB special meeting. I'll move approval. Second it. Motion is made, seconded, and carries unanimously to approve the minutes. Next item on the agenda is item number three. And just as a bit of housekeeping before we get there, um, I know, Mr. Scott, you had made the, the question about where is Rusty and just want to introduce uh, Monica Galuski. She's director of VLB Bond Funds Management. She's been with us for several months, and I guess this will be her first uh, appearance before the, the VLB board meeting. So I wanted to thank her for her service and introduce her to the board and she'll be handling uh, the next few items. So Monica, thank you. Good morning, Sister Havens, members of the board. Um, I'm Monica Galuski, Director of VLB Bond Funds Management. This is agenda item number three, consideration and possible adoption of resolution authorizing the issuance and sale of State of Texas Veterans Bonds Series 2023 in one or more series of installments in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed 250 million and providing for other matters relating to the subject. Approval of this agenda item will, in keeping with prior practice, authorize the issuance and sale of up to 250 million in tax exempt new money, general obligation bonds in the Veterans Housing Assistance Program during 2023. Under similar authority provided to staff in August of 2021, on June 29th of this year, the board closed on 250 million of State of Texas Veterans Bonds Series 2022. The issue was structured as variable rate with a swap to synthetically fix the interest rate on the bonds. The senior manager or marketing agent for the bonds was Jeffries and Bancroft Capital LLC, a service disabled veteran owned small business was a co-manager on the bond issue. The swap was provided by Bank of New York Mellon and liquidity was provided by Sumitomo Mitsui Banking Corporation. The series 2023 bonds are, six, are expected to be substantially similar in structure. The board has used the structure for almost all of its new money bond issues over the past 20 years. I recommend that the board authorize the issuance of up to 250 million in tax exempt new money general obligation bonds for the Veterans Housing Assistance Program between July 29th of 2022 and July 28th of 2023 with a final maturity no later than December 1st of 2054 and a bond tick not greater than 6%. That concludes my presentation. I'm available for any questions that you may have. Thank you. Any questions from the board? No, Monica, I have to congratulate you. You're just as fluent with all that arcane language as Rusty was. It's but <laughs> easy to understand. Thank you for the explanation. I move approval. Second. Motion is made, seconded, and carried unanimously to approve item number three. Uh, next item on the agenda is number four. Monica Galuski, Director of VLB Bond Funds Management. Agenda item four, this is consideration and possible adoption of resolution authorizing interest rate swap transactions relating to bonds issued or to be issued in connection with the Veterans Land Program or the Veterans Housing Assistance Program and providing for other matters relating to the subject. 
This item is the board's annual renewal of authorization for staff to execute interest rate swap transactions for a one year period upon notice to the chairman or the chief clerk. Financial markets continue to experience a high level of volatility, <laughs> which can create economic opportunities within markets such as the swap market. As a regular participant in the swap market, the board is well positioned to take advantage of these opportunities, but often must act quickly. As such, since January of 2009, the board has authorized staff for rolling one year periods of time to execute interest rate swap transactions to take advantage of market opportunities and to enter into swaps related to the board's annual bond issuance. Under authority provided by the board in August of 2021, staff executed an interest rate swap with the Bank of New York Mellon to synthetically fix the interest rate on the State of Texas Veterans Bonds Series 2022. The flexibility provided by the annual adoption of this resolution is a key factor in the board's ability to execute on economic opportunities and to effectively manage its bond and swap portfolios. I recommend that the board authorize staff to execute interest rate swap transactions upon notice to the chairman or the chief clerk for the period beginning July 29th, 2022 and ending July 28th, 2023. Um, I'm available for any questions. Um. Yes, sir, Mr. Scott. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Monica, just one quick question. When you said upon notice to the chair or the chief clerk, does this mean that before you actually execute the interest rate swap that you notify them, or is it something that you notify after everything's already done? It would be prior to executing on the swap. Excellent. Thank you. So this motion will give you the authority to enter into these interest rate swaps and then you'll just notify immediately prior to actually Correct. engaging in them make, make sure that you're aware or you know in agreement with us okay. executing on a swap Correct. i was just one question I, I didn't know if you could say anything more about the august 2021 um uh fixing the rate on the the 2022 series just uh, the, the value creation there and, and what the, the different rates were that, that you were able to uh, swap. So the um, authority that was granted in August of 2021, really the only action that was taken on swaps with respect to that authority was for the new 2022 issue. And, you know, it did allow for, you know, obviously to enter into that when it was feasible. We actually entered into that swap in April and um, executed the bonds at the end of June. Um, it, it, it's more of the ability to take advantage of those swap parties that are available, willing, you know, mm -hmm. are, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sorry, are eligible to be considered for our swaps and executing in advance so that in advance of the bond issue so that we know we've got that transaction done and those those bonds will be, you know, synthetically synthetic, sorry, synthetically fixed. Um, so we didn't, you know, it, it really was in this case for the past year, there weren't any opportunities to sort of, you know, um, swap, change out any swaps, terminate swaps for financial benefit, add any basis swaps on. Um, it was just the annual bond issuance and a swap associated with it. Yeah, yeah no, I, I understand the, uh, the flexibility that that provides and, and the value for uh, the VLB. Uh, just, just wondered if there were any uh, specific uh, examples that we could point to, but um, going forward, I, th I think it makes sense that you guys have that um, flexibility and authority. I'll move approval. I second the motion. All right. Motion is made. Seconded. Carries unanimously. Uh, next item on the agenda is number five. Monica Galuski, Director of VLB Bond Funds Management. This is agenda item five, consideration and possible adoption of resolution authorizing liquidity facilities relating to bonds issued or to be issued in connection with the Veterans Land Program or the Veterans Housing Assistance Program and providing for other matters relating to the subject. Approval of this agenda item will renew the board's annual authorization for staff to substitute liquidity facilities on existing variable rate bond issues, to enter into new liquidity facilities related to new VLB bond issues, and to amend associated bond resolutions as may be necessary. 
The board most recently provided this authority in August of 2021. Subsequently, staff arranged a liquidity facility with Sumitomo Mitsui Banking Corporation to provide liquidity on the State of Texas Veterans Bonds Series 2022. Looking forward, there are currently five liquidity facilities that will expire before the end of July 2023 that will need to be replaced. Um, I recommend that the board authorize staff to substitute existing liquidity facilities or to execute new liquidity facilities during the period beginning July 29th, 2022 and ending July 28th, 2023, and to amend <clears throat> supplement related bond resolutions as necessary to accommodate. That concludes my presentation and I'm available for any questions. Mr. Scott? Sure. Just a, a quick question. I, I know we've done these before and it obviously looks like a good idea, but when you talk about uh, establishing a liquidity facility based on our bonds, is this essentially borrowing money to in advance, <clears throat> in advance of the bond sales? Because of something else I read in our minutes indicated that the bonds were sold pretty quickly. So is this sort of a bridge financing? Is that what we use it for? I'm not sure I, let me, let me explain it my way and then you can tell me sure. how to your question. Okay. Uh, liquidity facilities in order to actually go out in the market and sell the bonds, we're going to have to have a liquidity provider because they're variable rate debt. So we enter the, into the liquidity facility in conjunction with the new bond issue. I got it. And, and typically they last, they're typically a five-year maturity or so. Um, so hence, we've got five that are coming up that are going to need replacement because they're all maturing before the end of July of next year. Did that answer your question? Excellent, excellent job. It did. Thank you very much. Move, move approval, unless there are any other questions. Second. Motion made, seconded, and carries unanimously to approve item number five. Thank you. Thank you for that. And I would agree, Mr. Scott, it, it is hard to find somebody who speaks this language fluently. So we, <laughs> we appreciate your service to the board. Thank you. Next Thanks. item on the agenda is item number six. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, my name is Raul Gonzalez, Deputy Director for Land and Housing Loan Programs. Item number six, uh, there are no appeals before the board today. I'm short. So no action item? No then? action item. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so no action on number six is necessary. So uh, next item on the agenda is number seven. Item number seven, there were eight tracks offered for sale during the last uh, online bidding period between June 13th and July 26th. We received a total of 147 bids resulting in eight high bids totaling $1,385,993. Staff is requesting that the board award all high bids and meet qualifications for the program. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Yes, sir, Mr. Scott. Okay, um, <clears throat> I have a, just a, a general question which will apply to this as well as the, uh, the order for sale coming up next. Um, I generally understand what happens when you have a, uh, a forfeiture in a, in a public sale, but I just wanted to double check um, with respect to our veterans that were involved here. I understand that if the uh, loan is unpaid, it becomes forfeited. And in this particular case, we have a remaining principal balance that I assume the Veterans Land Board then bids in at the sale. Um, and then you have to have qualified bids which exceed that amount to be able to then award the, the uh, high bid, high qualified, highest qualified bid, um, the, the victory in the, in the purchase. My question is with regard to any overage above the amount of the unpaid principal balance, does that go to the Veterans Land Board or does it go back to the veteran uh, originally involved? Where do the funds go? That actually stays with the, with the program. It goes back to the original funds. Yes, sir. Good. So it's, a, it's essentially proceeds that we can use again and lend out to somebody else. Correct. That's my understanding. Yes, sir. Excellent. Very good. Thank you. Um, just one question. I, I was just wondering, I mean, there were quite a few bids here. Um, and I was just wondering how the activity compared to uh, past auctions in terms of like number of bids and competition. And I, I believe it, it seems kind of robust here. 
Uh, it appears based on uh, my recollection that it, it is, you know, pretty active right now on these cells. Um, and I think it's kind of normalizing. Uh, the last cell was actually a little bit better as far as, you know, it was more active, but that was the first one since COVID had, had struck us. And so I think that right now it's still a little bit higher than uh, pre-pandemic from my understanding on that. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. All right, any additional questions? If not, I'll take a motion. Uh, approval. Second. Second, thank you. We have a motion uh, seconded and item carries unanimously. Next item on the agenda. Uh, item eight, staff is requesting that the board take action, uh, forfeiture action on the resolution, uh, except on accounts where sufficient funds are received to avoid that action. Today, we're presenting 11 accounts uh, for uh, forfeiture action today. With that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions from the board? It's interesting how uh, how some of these got so close to the end. There was the one where, um, but actually I did have one question with regard to the forfeiture. We had one that went to 109 payments delinquent, which is far longer than most normally are. Was there a particular story for why we didn't take action sooner? Yes, sir. That loan was actually under bankruptcy. So under bankruptcy, we're not able to collect on loans. So that's the reason for the number uh, of, of delinquent payments there. Excellent. Good work. And no, no further questions. Move approval. I'll second. Motion is made, seconded, and carries unanimously to approve item number eight. Next agenda is item number nine. On item number nine, staff is requesting that the board take action on the resolution again before you. Uh, the resolution lists the accounts to be considered for order uh, for sale today. Uh, there are eight accounts uh, that will become part of the next forfeited land sale. Uh, we also requesting the board's authority to pull any account that reinstates prior to the sale date. With that, I'll answer any questions. Questions? Okay. Um, move approval. Seconded. Motion is made, seconded, and carries unanimously to approve item number nine. Next on the item, uh, next item on the agenda is number ten. On uh, item number ten, uh, staff is requesting that the board uh, set the next quarterly electronic forfeited land sale bidding to begin on September sixth, twenty twenty two, at eight a.m. with a deadline of October twenty fifth, twenty twenty two, at five p.m. I'll be happy to answer any questions. That's an easy one. Move approval. Second. Mm -hmm. Made, seconded, and carries unanimously to approve item number 10. Uh, next item on the agenda is number 11. Next item, uh, staff is recommending board approval for the publication of a proposed rule change in the Texas Register, adding the United States Space Force as an eligible branch of service. At the end of the notice period, staff will seek final approval of the rule amendment, at which point the board may finalize the proposed change, make amendments to the proposal, and republish the proposed changes or withdraw the proposed changes. With that, I'll answer any questions. And to be clear, this item, this VLB, we're not altering definition of a veteran in Texas. We're just mirroring what the VA has done to include Space Force. Correct. Uh, what we, we're doing here uh, is going back with the National Defense Authorization Act of 2020 that defined uh, the United States Space Force as part of the uh, military service. I believe they're under the, 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 uh, the Air Force. So we're not doing anything. So what VA recently did, uh, I believe in June, was make the United States Space Force as a eligible uh, service as well under their program for the VA programs. Okay, thank you. Any uh, questions from the board? Mr. Chair, the, uh, the only, I have two. One is that uh, on behalf of Mr. Moody, he might object to the, all these other services being listed in front of the Marine Corps for Pete's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Marine Corps was the second established uh, service that we had following the army, he even beat the Navy into existence. But the, uh, but, but the, the question I have is the language at the end of the recommendation 
um, I assume is identical for each of the other branches because it's 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 a little different from the preceding paragraph that explains it. But all the the uh, four different criteria are identical to the existing criteria for the other branches. Is that right? That's correct. Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. I I would like to uh, move approval. Uh, in, in the name of my uh, sister-in-law, Jim Matthews, who is a member, a proud member of the Space Force. Wow, very good. Well, proudly second that motion. <laughs> right, <laughs> motion is made, seconded, and carries unanimously to approve agenda item number 11. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the Veterans Land Board will now enter into closed session pursuant to Chapter 551, Subchapter D, Texas Government Code, Section 551.071. For consultation with its attorneys regarding matters involving attorney client privilege information and legal issues associated with item number 12. Following the closed session, the board will reconvene in open session to complete the docket. All right, the open session of the July 29, 2022 meeting of the Veterans Land Board will resume with item number 12. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members. For the record, John Berkeley, Deputy Director for Texas State Veterans Home. This is for consideration and possible action to award the management and operations of the Frank M. Tejada Texas State Veterans Home in Floresville, Texas. Staff rec recommends and requests action on the voting item as discussed in special session. Staff recommends the board approve the award of the management and operations agreement for the Floresville home with care ends of Texas. If approved, the three -year, it is a three-year contract with a exp expiration date of August 31st, 2025 with an optional three-year extension. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions from the board? All right, is there a motion to approve? Um, Mr. Chairman, I move approval of the recommendation. I'll second that. All right, motion is made, seconded, and carries unanimously to approve item number 12. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is number 13. Morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. John Kelly, Deputy Director of the Texas State Veterans Cemetery Program. This item is for information only. As you know, we're about to enter a new fiscal year, uh, and I wanted to report to you that our contract with the City of Mission for the operation of the Rio Grande Valley State Veterans Cemetery remains unchanged. We'll enter into another year of that contract uh, with no change in the rate, $750,000. Subject to any questions. Any questions from the board? And again, this is just an informational item. Um, just a, a quick one. Um, to learn a little bit more about how we're doing in the operation of these cemeteries, where, where we have a, a collaborative effort, et cetera, um, how, is this, how are they doing? How is it working? Yes, sir. It's a great question. Thank you very much. Um, it, it's going very, very well. Uh, the contract was arranged so that the city would provide the workforce, all the operating expenses up to $1,000 for capital improvement and capital repair expenses, which are still ours. Uh, and they're doing very, very well down there. I, I'm actually going down there week after next to take a look. But uh, last couple of times I've been there, things look great. Uh, staff is doing great work. Uh, we're interring our honored veterans and family members as we should be. So they're taking pride, sounds like. I'm glad to hear that. Sure, absolutely. I, that's one of the positive side effects that we're seeing both at Mission and at the Corpus Christi Cemetery is that there's better community engagement because there's more of a sense of ownership within the community. Excellent. Thank you. I so would uh, like to note uh, thank Dr. Kelly and his staff. I had the opportunity to go down there with him a while back and visit Mission and uh, Corpus and uh, the board. We took some action to make some overdue improvements that were there. The, it, so it's really, it's looking good. It's it's become a key part of the community there and just think that um, really appreciate the the relationship with the, with the city and the county there in Nueces as well. So that one uh, being informational item only, next item is number 14. Good morning again, Dr. John Kelly, Deputy Director, Texas State Veterans Cemetery Program. Uh, also with fiscal year change, we're renewing or mentoring in another year of our contractual relationship with Nueces County for the operation of the Corpus Christi Cemetery, uh, the Coastal Bend State Veterans Cemetery. 
Uh, we did manage to negotiate down the rate slightly. Uh, this this year is, was nine hundred eighteen thousand dollars, and we've negotiated it down to nine hundred thousand dollars. So we've managed to save a little bit of money there, uh, but otherwise no change. Before <laughs> I, I'll go ahead and, and make the same comment about the Coastal Bend the State Veterans Cemetery. It's going very very well. Uh, great community engagement there. The uh, Veterans Services Office is what they parked this piece of the contract under, and it's made a great connection with all the other veteran benefits programs that VSOs do out there in the counties. Subject to your questions. Um, just, just one question. Um, so this is with two of our, our cemeteries. Have, have we explored that with the other two um, communities where those cemeteries reside or is, is that something that uh, we've considered at this point? Yes, sir, great question, and we absolutely are. Uh, we're seeing substantive savings from both the contract with the City of Mission as well as the contract with Oasis County on the order of about $300,000 a year for Mission and about $500,000 a year with Corpus. That's how much we're saving. Wow. So it is in our financial interest to do that. As I mentioned, the great positive benefit and side effect of it is increased community engagement as well. Uh, I personally have uh, have worked with uh, Jones County, the city of Abilene and Taylor County and trying to arrange that uh, for the Abilene Cemetery. I have not been successful thus far. Uh, and in the spring, I'm going to engage with Bell County and the city of Colleen to see if we can uh, get that same sort of arrangement in place for the Colleen Cemetery. Yeah. It's just let us know if there's anything that we can do on, on our end to, uh, to help facilitate that. Yes, sir. Absolutely. I congratulate you on these these uh, proactive steps. I think it's a wonderful thing, and it's a obviously a benefit to the community and and the residents of the community. And I'm sure that the families of the deceased probably appreciate it too, because it it's a, it's not just a cemetery parked out in the hill someplace. It's part of the community, and they can take pride in it. So I'm really pleased to see this. Thank you. Yes, sir. And we we have a number of exciting improvements coming in the future as well. That's going to make it even better for our our honored veterans and their, and their family members. Are there opportunities for um, community support where they can go out and do projects or Eagle Scout projects or other things like that to help out too? Yes, sir. We have those programs active at all four of the cemeteries. Um, everything from um, uh, retirement of flag programs, uh, all kinds of uh, projects like that. Uh, recently at the Co Coastal Bend State Veterans Cemetery, they actually did a program called Flag for a Flag. Uh, where community members were able to come and turn in their uh, flags for retirement and the local community funded an effort to give them a replacement flag. So we actually retired those flags at the Coastal Bend State Veterans Cemetery. There were over 2,000 flags retired over a period of two days. Wow. Must have been a heck of a ceremony. Good job. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And speaking of improvements, I guess the next item on the agenda is number 15. Yes, sir. Member of the board, uh, members of the board and chairman, Dr. John Kelly, Texas State Veterans Cemetery Program Deputy Director. This item is also for information. Uh, once a year, the VA accepts uh, grant requests for uh, very, various activities at the state veterans cemeteries. Uh, and the one we submitted a pretty major grant this year for an expansion project at the Coastal Bend State Veterans Cemetery in Corpus Christi. It's about $11.1 million uh, for expansion. At the beginning of this year, I put some new monitoring systems in place to be able to better analyze and predict when we might have shortages of plot space, whether it's casket space, columbaria space, or in-ground cremated remains spaces. And that system detected that we were about two and a half, just over two and a half years out from exhaustion of both casket space and columbaria space. The guidance from the uh, National Cemetery Administration is when you're four years out from exhaustion is when you submit the grant. So we're behind the power curve a bit uh, because we submitted it when we were two and a half years out, uh, but we did get that in. Uh, it's looking very good. Also, the National Cemetery Administration guidance was to build for 10 year grants. In other words, if you're going to do a grant, make sure you're doing building it enough to last for the next 10 years. So you're not right back to them with another grant request. And that's actually in our interest to do that. Uh, so we've done that uh, for this grant. We'll be adding 4,000 prepositioned crypt spaces, about 1,250 columbaria spaces, 
lots of, uh, with all of these grants comes grading, erosion control and irrigation. Um, but we also, and you, uh, just so that your sister-in-law, Mr. Moody will be happy, uh, we are integrating in Space Force as well. Hmm. And it sounds like an easy thing, just raise another flag, but it's actually not as easy as you think. We have five service flagpoles now. We have to actually take all five of them out of the ground and reset them centered on six flagpoles instead of five. Uh, likewise, our service seals, we have bronze seals, five of them. We have to take all of those off the wall, reset them centered for six. And then there are smaller seals at the committal shelter that we've got to pull off and reset as well. Uh, so we'll be integrating that in. We're also going to integrate in automatic locking front gates, uh, which enhance our security at the cemetery. Uh, we're going to improve some of the existing irrigation lines, make them a bit bigger to handle the additional capacity, widen a couple roads, and then take care of a, a couple of minor fence issues. Uh, if, and I'm being told right now that we are looking very good to get selected for funding, we'll find out for sure in October, around the 1st of October. Uh, if that were to happen, immediately we would launch architectural and engineering efforts using the 10% state money that was uh, set aside for this project. We get that reimbursed later on in the in the grant process. And so the grant's actually 100% funded by the VA. And that's that's different from the Vet Homes grant funding. Theirs is 6535, uh, but th these wind up being 100% funded by the VA. Uh, so we'll get the architectural engineering going. Groundbreaking would be best guess about May of next year. That's assuming the contracting pieces and all that goes smoothly. Uh, and so we're looking at about 270 to 300 days for the actual construction itself. So we'll finish it in the summer of 2024. Subject to your questions. Yes, sir, Mr. Scott. Mr. Um, John, I'm impressed. This is excellent. I have, I have two questions that come from this and thank you for your proactive management. The first is in the new cemetery monitoring system, is that something you developed or it's software that we have somewhere and we, we then started it? How did that work? Yes, sir. It was actually an improvement to an existing tool. Uh, the tool existed in sort of a baseline function. So we've enhanced it and actually made it quite a bit more accurate. Um, I'd love to say I built it, but I didn't. It was already existing, but it needed some work on some automatic formulas and that sort of thing. Uh, and so that's all in place now for analysis and prediction. I review it personally on a quarterly basis now. Good. And this is something we use in all of our cemeteries now, right? Yes, sir. The tool actually is for all four of the cemeteries. I monitor all four of them for all of the plot types. And is that able to, I assume because it's monitoring existing cemeteries, you're not really able to use the same tool to forecast the need for cemeteries in other areas of the state, or is there some, something else, some other tool we use for that? Yes, sir, that's a different tool. Uh, that tool is based on unserved veteran population. And I have to get data to support that from the VA themselves, uh, because they're the ones that are um, through the census program, they're calculating how many veterans there are per county uh, and then we, we have a tool we plug that into to determine those unserved veteran populations. It's a completely separate system. I, I assumed it was. There was something we talked about a couple of previous meetings ago where we wanted to sort of come up with a long range strategic plan of where we needed additional cemeteries. So we have the heads up ability to manage that. So it sounds like you've already, you're down that path also. Yes, sir. Good job. The other question is just a simple one is terminology. I, I know what a burial plot is, and I know what a crypt is, but I don't know what a crypt casket burial plot is. This a, is this some structure that has underground burial, or what, what is it? Yes, sir, great question. Uh, Preposition crypt is a relatively new methodology. So think of a, a traditional casket burial. We would dig a hole, and in that hole, right. we would put a grave liner. And yeah. in the grave liner is where the casket is placed. Right. Think now of the construction uh, folks digging a giant hole in the ground and putting the grave liners in place first, uh. putting a lid on it, and then covering it all back up. So when we're ready to inter someone, all we do is dig down about two feet to the, to the lid, take the lid off, and then we inter. Uh, it saves us on grave liners costs. It saves us on grave liner availability as well. Uh, it also means the wear and tear on our equipment is not quite as extensive because we're only digging down two feet instead of all the way eight feet down. Uh, so they do that and just imagine a big field full of these concrete grave liners. They cover it all back up. They install irrigation. They install markers so we know where these uh, lids are on each of the, uh, the grave liners. 
and then we use them just like we would for a regular casket burial. That's interesting. And then, and then when there's an interment, then the actual grave marker is installed as, as part of that process. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Well, this is impressive. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Uh, I do think it is important to note that um, with all of the services we provide to veterans, it is within a constrained funding system. We're using only our VLB funds. So any opportunity that we have to get a hundred percent a uh, federally funded grant like this to make some dramatic improvements. I always appreciative of that. And I think this grant uh, just for this expansion is probably larger than the initial construction grant. Yes, sir. It is the, uh, the initial construction grant was 8.4 million, which if we index it against inflation today is just shy of 11 million. This one's 11.1 million. Next spring, I'll be in front of you with the submission of a clean grant that is going to dwarf this one. It's going to be at least twice as big as this one. Wow. I think so. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate that. That one being uh, informational item only. Uh, next is item number 16. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. John Kelly, Deputy Director, Texas State Veterans Cemetery Program. This also, item is also for information. Uh, I mentioned the monitoring systems installed earlier this year. Uh, they also made a prediction for us that we were at a crisis point in running out of what are called in-ground cremated remains plot areas. Uh, cremated remains, cremains for short, if you will. Um, we were less than a year out of running out of space at the Colleen, Abilene, and Corpus Christi cemeteries. Now, uh, when we went out and got bids, uh, our initial estimates, rather, I should say, uh, they were all less than $100,000. That ruled out requesting it from the VA. They do not take grant requests less than $100K. But we also ruled the VA out because the uh, grant approval submission timeline would not be able to complete development of these types of plot areas prior to their exhaustion. Uh, I'm sure you all join with me. We never want to say to a veteran or their family, I'm sorry, we can't inter you because we ran out of plot space. Uh, so what we've chosen to do is to move forward with development of additional in-ground cremated remains plot areas using state funds. Uh, we have spent about uh, $56,000 at, at, for all three locations in terms of architectural and engineering. And state bids have gone out, and you see the total there, 484000 That's for all three locations combined. At the Abilene Cemetery, we'll get about 1,257 uh, in-ground cremated remains plot spaces for that. We'll get um, 1,072 spaces at the Corpus Christi uh, Cemetery, and then we'll get 1,440 spaces at the Colleen Cemetery. Subject to your questions. Um, I have my usual, uh, got to understand this thing, an uh, in-ground cremain plot, cremains plot, is it like a regular burial plot, it's just smaller? Is that essentially how it works? Yes, sir. We offer two types of interment for cremated remains. One is the columbaria niches. Right. And then we have in-ground, which as it says, the, the urn is actually buried in the ground. Uh, but you're right, the plot spaces are a lot smaller. They're generally, we're going to be looking at three foot by four foot plots each of those will get a headstone. So in a lot of ways, it's going to look like the traditional casket burial areas with the headstones lined up, dress right dress, all that kind of thing. Uh, but the plot size would be just far smaller. This has become a very popular uh, plot selection type by veterans and their families. Good to know. I, I was familiar with the columbarium, columbaria, um, and I understand how all that works. So this is an attractive alternative. I have not seen this before. Yes, sir. What we're seeing in usage rates right now is for cremated remains burials. It's about 50-50. About 50% want the columbaria. The other 50% are wanting the in-ground with the uh, upright headstones. Excellent. All right. Well, again, thank you for uh, everything you're doing for the veterans. and. There are no other questions, comments from the board, then this meeting is hereby adjourned.